Good morning, Coach. Craig Morales from Hero Sports. Uh, Coach, you came into a situation last year, you had the season opening uh, contest up there at Indiana PA, and then a lot of off the field drama within the program, not involving the players necessarily, but but it looks but from the looks of it down the stretch things finally started to gel. How do you build on that late season momentum heading into this season? Well, just going back, um, I was working with the Philadelphia Eagles in the scouting department, and um, Coach Costa basically gave me a call about uh, the beginning of August 1st, and uh, basically uh, he said, uh, could you come be offense coordinator? So I was like, uh, let me get back in the, the game of football and, and uh, hope, help more young men. So I came, the, the kids reported on August the 5th. I got here August the 12th as the offensive coordinator. So we was already behind the eight ball. So um, when I first got in here, I, I told the kids, you know, just believe in me, follow directions, and, and, and just try to get better day in and day out. So after that first game of the season, when they uh, dismissed uh, Coach Costa as well as defense coordinator, they named me uh, the interim head football coach. And then, you know, the, the one thing that I can say about my football team is they played for me. You know, we got better day in and day out, and all we want to do is just compete each and every day and just try to learn how to win because that's what it's about. We're not worried about who we who, who we have in front of us. We're just worried about what we do. And we get better day in day and, and, and be a champion seven days out of the week. So that, that's that's. That's how we were able to, you know, get better uh, later later part in the season because at the beginning of the season we weren't able to, um, you know, win some ball games. But at the, the middle part of the season, then we start, you know, coming formed in at that point of time. Just for uh, players, uh, Rod and uh, Denzel, I'll ask each of you to like maybe talk about some of your some of your teammates returning and some of the new new talent coming in on the offense and defense respectively and then after Rod and Denzel talk coach if you want to expand upon like top like the top competitions at different positions heading into spring so Rod uh, well for the offensive side I'll talk about that um, basically I also the line I feel confident about off the line uh, we have Donald Brinke coming back uh, we have this transfer, uh, Big Rice. Um, and we have a couple of transfers on the line and some freshmen. So I f- feel pretty confident about the line this year. And then we have um, Jordan Turkman at the wide receiver. Um, and we have uh, – uh, hmm. we had a couple of wide receivers. We have um, – uh, Antonio Thomas, he's a good player, and we have Parker. So uh, then the base key returning, and I feel confidence by them. Right, well, with uh, defense, we have with me coming back, uh, a couple of key defense linemen, uh, Darius Goodman, Chaz Crosby. Um, at the linebacker uh, core, we have uh, um, some incoming freshmen coming in that are supposed to uh, do a great job. So we're looking forward to uh, making them part of the team. Uh, basically, on offense, um, we have uh, two offense linemen that's coming back: uh, Brandon King, who played, who starts at right guard. We also have uh, a right tackle, uh, Donald Brinkley, that'll be back. We have our all-star running back, uh, Roger Davenport, who was the leading rusher last year, over a thousand some yards. On defense, uh, we have uh, Denzel Watkins, who's to my right, right here, who had 48 tackles last year, he was the third uh, leading tackler on the team. We have all rookie um, defense lineman. Chad Cosby, who will be uh, at our nose guard this season, as well as we have uh, Darius Goodman, who uh, led the team with tackle for losses, 13.5 tackle for losses, as well as 6.5 uh, sacks. So we're in tack. Uh, we have some new guys coming in that, that should help us uh, get to where we, where we need to be. But like I said, all we're trying to do is just strive for perfection. We've already strived for perfection in the classroom on the conference team GPA last year with a 2.77. We had 20 to um, um, football players who had over a 3.0 GPA. So we're doing the things that we need to do off the field. So now we're just trying to translate them on onto the field. So uh, like I said, we're just trying to worry about what we do. And that, what we do is trying to get better day in and day out. Uh, Jay Bell with HSRN Radio. The uh, new facilities that are being built, can you get a, give us an update status on, on the progress of the facilities and are, how are you using that as a recruiting tool? It's outstanding. We're, <laughs> it's going to be a, a blessing for us because we play five home ball games right there on campus this year. 
people keep asking me, are you guys going to play? Where are you guys playing? We're playing right on campus. So you see the bulldozers uh, every day uh, moving the dirt, putting the parking lot. They're, they're now uh, expanding on the, the press box and things of that nature. So we're going to play all of our home ball games on campus because, you know, when you, you play at a high school, that's a different feeling compared to you, you're right on a campus and, and you got your, your student athletes as well as your alumni coming out uh, to support you. So it, it's, it's outstanding for us. So we're, we're excited this year. And how are you using that as a recruiting tool? Well, I mean, it's huge. That's the first thing kids look for. They want to see what your facility is about, and they see that beautiful campus. They see that beautiful track. Uh, they, they see the artificial turf. Then they hear about uh, our uh, athletic director, who's uh, George Pup Williams, who's won a national championship year in and year out. So you know that you can win there on that campus. If, if, if you see a legend that works that I work for who's always telling me advice. So we're, we're we're just excited about things. Uh, coach and players, her point, the Charlotte Post. Uh, in terms of last year, knowing that you took over under difficult circumstances, how much of a comfort level do you have now having an off-season training where you know where the coach is and you can kind of grow as players and get attached to him and you can dispense better? information as a coach to the players well right now um like he's saying uh now i know his feel and uh what he want and what his expectations and just like getting into the playbook uh we go over stuff we watch film and now i know what he want now i know he uh basically now like i said now i know what he um want for us to uh do on the field and off the field and all that stuff well, um, it, it was just at first, you know, everybody didn't know what what his uh, really what he wanted to do at first, as far as um, the goal with the team. We know he wanted to win, but we had to buy into what he was doing to uh, get going. That's why, close to the end of the season, we started getting coming together as a team. Well, basically, um, for me, you know, these kids went through a lot last year. You know, uh, they had a, a coach pass away in January. Uh, then they had. Um, a uh, player pass away during the spring. Then I had a, a player who was under my tutelage who passed away um, uh, after the third ball game of the season because that's, that's kind of tough, you know, uh, when we play a football game and then Sunday he calls me at 1 o'clock in the morning and says, hey, coach, I, I got to go home because my grandmother's uh, become ill. And I said, everybody knows I'm a family-oriented guy, so I basically said, you know, son, you know, can you wait uh, in the morning and, and drive back home? And then he said, well, coach, I got to go home. I didn't realize what he was talking about by going home. He was going home to God. So, um, you know, for for those kids and then for them to have a, a head coach who, who was there for about 14, 15 years as well as a defense coordinator that was, that was there just, just as long, that's grieving too as well. So I commend these, these men – to my left and my right because they fought. They could have easily quit, you know. So that that just shows you uh, a team that uh, went through some things and they kept fighting game after game. So now that we are basically have uh, things that we can worry about about getting better and not worried about you know things that are tribulation, you know, things going on in our life. So now we can get better and just just keep working hard and getting better and better day by day and competing and just the the model for this year is just win. Hi, Denzel. Just questions for you. Um, you practice. Roger Davenport is the was the um, CIAA leading rusher last year. He was only the second person um, in since we started football to rush for over a thousand yards. You practice against him every day. Why is Roger so good? Um, this is worth the ethic. Every time he comes out to the field, he's uh, coming 100. percent Every play, every time he has a ball in his hand, he's, he's coming as hard as he can. So if I if I'm half stepping when he's coming my way, yeah, I'm, he's going to embarrass me. So we try to go as hard as we can throughout practice every day. Thanks.